All right, so with Git on the command line, um, you should have installed and, and have a, or at least have a working version of Git on your computer. Um, so what we can do now is, uh, first of all, well, we want to set up our uh, account. So um, uh, let's go to, uh, I'll just open up a new, a new terminal here. Um, so I can type which git, and I should see wherever my git is. Um, so, um, first of all, we want to do is, is configure your, um, your environment. So, yeah, so I wanted to see that I already done this. So, um, uh, well, YouTube has my Gmail account now, so that's fine. Um, so uh, yeah, so basically you're gonna um, configure your uh, your settings. So you can type these commands. You can type git config dash dash global uh, user dot name and then the name of your um, uh, your your name, your first and last name, just however you want to be known, using this command, um, and then this will give you the the output of that. Um, and then same thing with email. You can type git config dash dash global user dot email, and we'll give you and you'll specify whatever email address you want to use, and then you can can see what that is. Um, and if you want to see all of your things that are set, you can type git config dash l, which will list, or you can type da dash dash list and it will list all of the things that are set. So these are different um, settings. These are used by GitHub. So um, you can then, um, we're going to make a, um, a working directory. So on my computer, this is just my style. I like to have a folder um, in my home folder. So um, once this is done, you should be able to type get config l, and you should see at least your username and your email. Um, you can also set the text editor you like. Um, I think by default it's Emacs, um, but you can set that to Nano. I'm using the same kind of uh, syntax, um, and then it, the, it will use your once you when you do your first um, commands to to push content, it will ask you for your username and 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 password, um, and then it will it, you know if you're using a Mac, it'll store that on your computer. Um, but I like to put my Git repositories in a special place on my computer, so I just have a folder in my home folder that's called Git, and that's that's where I store my Git repositories. You can make, you can have a repository on any part of your computer. I just prefer it this way. So, if you want to do that, you can type make directory uh, Git or make directory dash Git. Um, I've already done this, so I'm not gonna. I don't need to do this. If I if I do that, it'll say already exists. But you should, if you want, if you want to follow along with this, I I suggest at least for today, it might be a good thing to do. Um, so we've now got our username and email set up. We've got a, a place on our computer where we can clone repositories and, and have them. So uh, first thing we're going to do is going to type cd git. And now we're going to clone uh, the repository we just made on GitHub to our local computer. And we can make changes there. So. Uh, we can copy this command to our terminal. And you're going to want to change my username to whatever your username is. Right? Because that's the URL of, the, uh, of your repository. So, and 
Another way um, you can do this is if you go to the repository homepage and you type clone or download, it will give you um, it will give you the uh, the URL. So you can copy that. It will cop you can just click that button. It'll copy it to your clipboard, and then I'm going to cancel. I'm going to Control C there, and I can type git clone, and then whoops, git clone, and then it it doesn't. In my experience, it doesn't really matter if you have the .git after that or not, repository name or not. Um, either way, it should work. So we're going to um, clone that repository to our local directory. So now um, you should see, I have a couple other repositories, but this Hello World one has now been um, copied. So if we could CD Hello World, we're now in this repository, and it just has this README file. If we if we um, we can type cat README, and we can see we've now copied that that file to our local uh, computer. So we can create a new branch. Um, we can switch to that branch, which means you're now going to be working on that branch. Um, and we can now make, so we're now working on a branch that's called my branch. Remember before we had a branch that was called readme edits, so this is a different branch. It's located on our, right now it's only on our local computer, but later on we can push that branch to the web. So we can now um, open up readme.md. I can do, uh, you can do, open it however you want. If you have a, an alias like, like me, you can do sublime or atom. If you set that up in your .bash profile, so I'll do sublime uh, readme. And it, here's that file again, right? So we can now make changes. Um, are there other um, websites that work with Git? I don't know. Um, what's it? GitHub. GitLab also works with Git? Okay, I haven't used it. Um, yeah, is it so okay? So that's a good question because I believe Git is open source, but GitHub was recently bought by Microsoft, so um, which is not open source. Um, so yeah, that's a good point. I don't. Um, you don't have to use GitHub, I guess, um, but we will. We will today. Um, I, yeah, it makes sense that you could have different, you know, different hubs, right? Different versions because the software is just agnostic to that. Um, so here we can um, we can add a list, say four and five. You know, save that and then close it. Um, and we're also going to make a new file called git ignore. We're going to so we're going to type touch dot git ignore. So if we type ls-a, we will see um, all of the files in this directory. So we have readme, we have .git ignore, and then we have this .git directory, which is keeping track of all the changes we're making. And uh, then we can type git status. So it now says um, we are on branch, my branch, and then we have all these changes that were have not been staged for commit. So it says it gives us this helpful helpful commands. It says use git add the name of the file to update what will be committed. And we can type more than one file. And these, we also have untracked files. So we can type git add file name to add untracked files. Um, if we have um, changes that we want to undo, we could type git checkout dash dash name of the file and it would undo those changes we made.
but we don't want to do that. We want to keep them. So we're going to git add readme.md and then got dot git ignore. So we can do multiple file names on the on one line. Now if we type git status, we see we have changes to be committed. So we have a new file, dot git ignore, and we have a modified file, readme. So this is very handy. Typing git status um, as you're working is a really great way to keep track of what what's going on in your repository. So we added those files. Now we're ready to commit. So we're going to um, type git commit dash m and then if we just if we just typed git commit it would prompt us with a, a, a new window which would be a text editor but uh, it's easier to just make the changes directly on the command line so we can say added dot git ignore and edited readme.md. So that is a message that will describe our commit and be useful to other people or ourselves to see what we did. Once we hit enter, it's going to say, um, it's going to give us the name of, of the commit, which is th this branch and then this number. Uh, it's going to have our description. It's going to say two files changed uh, with two insertions. <coughs> then uh, we're going to push those changes. So um, um, what we can do first of all is we can say git remote uh, dash v and it will um, it will tell us that the uh, the branch where we're where we're um, pushing to is currently set to uh, our, our remote repository that we downloaded from. But we want to push to, um, and actually that's fine, but uh, we're going to push the current branch by actually specifying um, the upstream, which was which is origin. Um, so this is going to push those changes to um, Um, to GitHub, and if we type now git remote v, uh, it's still set the same, but what we've done is um, we've created, so let's, go, let's look through this. So we've, um, we are compressing the objects, then we are writing them, um, and uh, the um, branch that we're working on is my branch and it says it's now tracking the remote branch my branch which is um, from this this origin um, it's also possible I think we'll see this in a minute to set an upstream um, as well so now um, if we go back to github our repository, you'll see that automatically, um, even without refreshing, it says uh, we've created, we have this branch that recently pushed, um, that had commits that were recently pushed to it, um, called my branch. And so now we can do a compare and pull request. Um, again, we can see now the changes that we made, and we can see that it, it automatically gets the name of the of that commit that we used. So that all looks good. It's able to be merged. We can create the pull request. And um, it was checking to see if they can be merged. There's no conflicts with the base branch, so it can be merged automatically. We don't have to resolve any conflicts. Um, and so since this is our own repository, we can go ahead and merge that pull request. Um, and we can say these changes were made locally on my computer. Um, and we can leave that branch now. There's a way to, um, if you want to delete the branch, you can delete it both separately on the GitHub and on and locally, but 
we can leave that for now. Okay, um, so that is how you would um, take a repository that you created on the web or that you have somewhere, cl uh, clone it and, and make changes locally and then push those changes back. Um, the next example is to um, start a new repository locally and then publish that to GitHub. So uh, we're going to uh, you can type cd tilde slash git. That'll take us back to our git repository in our home directory. And we're going to make a directory my repo. And then we're going to type git init my repo. So this is going to um, create a dot git folder in there. Um, so it's initializing an empty repository here. Um, and now we're going to cd my repo. And if we type ls, we don't see anything. But if we type ls-a, we can see there's this dot git folder that was created. So it's tracking what's going on in this repository. Uh, so now we can just type a really simple command. We're going to echo this string to readme.md. Now if we, if we look at readme.md, we see it's just got that one line. We're then going to type git add. Uh, so we can, first we can type git status. We can see that there's this untracked file. So we can type git add readme. Um, and Git should have should understand tab completion, which is pretty cool. So it knows which files you might want to be adding. So you can type git add readme.md, and then now if we type git status, you can see that it's it's ready to be committed. It's in green now instead of red. So we can type git commit m added readme to initial commit. And if we now look at git remote dash v, there are no um, remotes set up, so it doesn't know um, where we might want to like push and pull content from. So what we can do is um, add a remote. Uh, and this would just be called origin, which is just the uh, the most basic type of, of remote. Um, there's another one that's called upstream, which would be uh, like the master that you're getting stuff from. But in this case, we just have one repository. So we're going to do git remote add origin and then the name of, of the URL. So we're going to call it myrepo.git and then we're going to replace my username with your username. So now if we type git remote dash v, we've set that remote location on the web. Um, and this is, I guess, where you could use GitLab or something if you're not using GitHub. Um, and potentially, I guess you could create your own Git server if you wanted to. Um, so you can, um, now we're going to push Again, we're, the set upstream only needs to be set um, the first time. Um, and we're saying git push. We're going to push to uh, origin, which is this URL. Once we do it the first time, it will then remember that. And when we hit, we can just type git push, and it will. we don't need to add that. And then we're going to push master, which is the name of the branch, um, because we didn't create any other branches in this repository, so the default branch is called master. And when we typed git status, we saw that we were on branch master. So we do that. Um, and let's go back to our I 
think I missed something here. Okay, I'm going to take a timeout. 